So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the roof and floor polygon tool. Uh, so we're going to do two different methods here. I'm going to show you how to use both a roof and a floor polygon file at the same time. And then I'm just going to show you how you could also use a single roof or floor uh, file on its own. So this is an example. Uh, we've got X, Y, Zs, and we've got some sort of location. Uh, and you can see that we've got about, in this example, we've got 25 or something uh, different records here. So we've got the file and we've got two in this example. And what we're going to do is using the import solids from roof and floor polygons. I'm going to show you the method that uses both the floor and the roof at the same time, uh, because that's the, the simpler way of doing this. So if you've got both, this is the method that you'd be using. Uh, you can see that because I've done this already, I've got the expression already in here. So if you haven't built this up before, what we've got here is a essentially a little bit of logic that says if the file name has the word roof in it then it's part of the roof if it has the name floor in it it's going to be part of the floor there's no other splits there's no other definition it's literally like if the alpha block one strip two po 40 is going to be the roof it's from the roof file floor from the floor file uh, the method that i show i'll show you in a minute that uses only the roof uh, is a little bit more complicated, but let's start with this one. So if you want to save these settings, once you've generated them, the import exports available from both these locations. On the next screen, we need some way of generating files. So there's two ways of, of using these tools, any way you see them in Spry, uh, which is to either import them directly into the table, which matches them to existing records. So you need some way of saying, okay, this is the pit strip block seam bench in this example. Now I don't have seams in my polygons, uh, which is reasonably common to get depending on your reserving software. So what I'm going to do is send them out to files instead. But if you want to bring them into your table, uh, you just use expressions to to match the, the different um, the different columns to the different levels in your in your pit. So we're going to go to files, and you can see that effectively what I'm doing is I'm gr I'm using it's it's similar to a grouping expression if you've seen it elsewhere in Spry. But we're saying okay, look, each group is going to be a pit block strip bench and and turn that the roof will come from the roof farm because we defined that on the previous page. And the filter expression is if there's some particular thing that you don't want to generate solids for, you can you know if you said look, I don't want to produce solids for anything past strip eight, you'd say uh, you know the you'd fill put in a filter expression that that reduced the number of strips you were looking at. Uh, but now that this, uh, I'll, uh, the settings are already here because as I said, I've gone through it, but you might need to pick a folder. Once we're done with this, it's going to generate the polygons and it's going to send it out to the folder that you've defined. Now, when I click export file list, this allows me to create a list of the, uh, the files I've generated. Now, that's good if you just want to directly import them. Um, uh, import CSV, whatever you want to call it, uh, which will now be here. So I'll show you quickly how you might format this. This is the method that I would use. Uh, paste it a second time. I'm going to call this one solid. And then we're going to use the text to columns to split it out. So we've now got the pit strip. Uh, that's the block strip and bench. And now that's essentially something you could import in the import data window in Spry. So if you save that, you'd be able to now import that straight through now in the import data section. Now that's fine if you've got both roof and floor. Uh, if for some reason you only have roof or only have floor, then the alternative method that you have to use is uh, just use one. So we go back to the import solids, roof and floor polygons, and this time I'm only going to pick the roof file. Now it's going to try and give me the same horizon information as before. Now that's not going to work. So I actually need to scratch this horizon. So I've got no horizons at the moment. Uh, and what I want to do is use the wizard. So uh, the wizard here will allow me to say, well, how am I, if I need the roof to use the roof as the roof and the floor, what I need to do is use the roof of the bench below as the floor of, of, of my polygon. So the way that the horizon wizard works is you say, okay, well, in that example, where my horizons are, they're at my benches. So the column is called bench. So the expression is also going to be called bench. If I put that in here and click apply, 
you'll get this list. Now this doesn't start out correct most of the time. It just adds them in the order in which it finds them. Uh, you can ignore this column for the moment, but what we want to do is, is manually order these so that they line up. Now it's obviously in this, in this case, uh, numerically you could have automatically sorted it, but most of the time it's not going to be quite as simple as alphanumeric. And you can see because they go from P to M, you do need to do some kind of, uh, of, uh, of assessment. So the next thing that you do, once you've got them in the order that you need them in is you click this little generate horizon names. And so what we can do is we can say, look, it's, if it's called, if it's, if it's a PO60, well, then that's going to be what the horizon is going to be called. And this should become clear, hopefully in a moment, but what we want to do is the expression for this little horizon name generator is roof. Now, there's certain examples of other types of polygons that you may want to split. So maybe as every second row or starting at the first row. But in this example, I just want to say, look, yeah, PO60 is, is the 60RL plus the 55RL roof as its floor. So we click accept. We've now got horizons. It's been formatted a little bit differently. We've got brackets around things. and But that's just an automatic way of, of building up all this without you having to know uh, the the intricacies of building it up. So uh, if you forget, just watch the video again. Uh, there will be some screenshots associated with the documentation. So that's how you set up your horizons. From here, everything else is the same as before. So files, uh, the only change that you make is instead of using the bench as the expression, uh, you may want to use the horizon as the expression. So nothing should really change. Um, but uh, you may want to set your horizon as your expression when you're doing it this method. Once that's done, create a this method too. Now I'm not going to show you the difference between these two. Obviously, the ones with the just use roofs are going to be slightly less detailed, but uh, it should still be pretty good. We're still going to produce a similar number, not quite as many because that lowest level, the 20, uh, may not have a uh, a floor below it to create a polygon for. So, but that's it. Uh, that's the summary of how you use the roof and floor polygon tool.